I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and today I'm driving one of the sportiest choices in the mid-size segment, and that is the Mazda 6. But this isn't just any Mazda 6. Although this third generation 6 launched all the way back in 2012, which is six years ago, Mazda have breathed fresh life into the 6 for the second time now, as this vehicle has received its second facelift, which is pretty obvious from the new front end, which I actually think looks incredibly good. Not that the Mazda 6 was looking that dated to start with. However, the big changes to the 6 aren't just aesthetic. They also include comprehensive changes under the skin, particularly under this long flowing bonnet where you'll now find Mazda's turbocharged petrol engine from the CX-9. And of course, without all that size and weight of the CX-9, this thing ought to go pretty well. And we'll check that out in the roads around here in Victoria's high country pretty soon. However, there are also big alterations to the interior that are all part of Mazda's push to make the 6 and their whole brand more premium in the eyes of buyers to make this vehicle a better competitor to something like a Volkswagen Passat. So has that premium push worked and is the Mazda 6 still one of the best choices in the mid-size segment? Well, before we take it out on the road, let's jump inside and start finding out. Although the general theme of the Mazda 6's cabin looks relatively similar to the vehicle that came before this, almost every single component has been swapped out for one that looks better and is made of higher quality materials. And that's really evident when you start looking at the detail of this really broad dashboard that feels and looks really expensive. What Mazda have done is they've relocated a bunch of components like the air vents and the temperature controls to create this really wide line that's upholstered in soft touch material, leather like material in this GT, but in fact in ultra suede in the top spec Atenza model. That looks great. The Atenza also comes with real Japanese wood trim, which is the first time in my memory that we can see something like that being used on a Japanese mid-size car where it doesn't look tacky. In fact, it looks really great. However, the GT gets some really cool aluminium-like material in its place. In fact, material quality generally in the Mazda 6 is lovely. There's soft touch material everywhere you look. This steering wheel, which is similar to what the one you get in the MX-5, looks and feels great. The same with the shifter. There's even really plush material where your leg comes to rest. This car feels genuinely expensive and like it is successfully pushing into the premium class here inside. Plus, you feel like you're sitting in a good driving position ergonomically with the steering wheel, shifter and the rotary dial for the infotainment all falling easily to hand. Speaking of the infotainment, it's been upgraded to the 8-inch system uh, from the CX-9, which looks a little better. However, it's still missing Apple CarPlay and Android Auto although Mazda say that technology will arrive by the end of the year. You sit in seats that have been made distinctly more plush and comfortable this time around. The base is longer, they're designed to be sunk into, and over a fairly long drive today, I did find that they were really comfortable and supportive. That's referring to the 10-way electrically adjustable driver's seat that you get as standard in the GT and the Atenza. Lower versions of the 6 come with more simple seats, although we're told they're comfortable as well. We'll be testing that out back in Sydney. And in fact, the Atenza comes with really lovely Napa leather. You do get standard leather in the Touring and GT and cloth on the Sport. Practicality-wise, the 6 is pretty good. So there's a big tray between the seats with two really deep Starbucks-sized cup holders, a small bin where you'll find two extra USB ports, and also a tray ahead of the shifter, although this car doesn't come with wireless charging. Life is pretty good in the back of the Mazda 6 as well because a lot of the quality materials from up front carry through to the back of this car. So all the door trim is soft, for example, which is not something that you see on all of this car's rivals. And the actual space on offer isn't bad either. For me as a six footer, I've got really good headroom, good legroom, and okay tow room sitting behind my own driving position. And as an added benefit, the actual bench in the back of the 6 is angled upwards and the material is really plush, so you could easily spend a few hours in the back of the car. Plus, all Mazda 6s have rear air vents, and they all come with a flip-down center armrest that features two USB ports for those in the back, and that's from the base model upwards. However, it's only the GT and a Tenza that come with rear seat heating, 
a feature which is pretty lush. Among sedans, the Mazda 6 is a big one, and that means that you get a big boot behind this manually operated gate. In fact, there's 474 litres of space available, more than enough for a small yellow backpack. In fact, enough for several large suitcases. Indeed, there are a couple of special features. There's two shallow bins either side of the boot floor, and you can release the back seats via these pulleys here. But if you need a lot more space than this, then Mazda will sell you a station wagon version of the 6, which has a huge amount of cargo space, and in my opinion, actually looks better than the sedan anyway. So Mazda have given the Mazda 6 a really handsome new face. They've improved the interior quality by a mile, but what's the facelifted 6 like to drive? Well, it's pretty different, mostly because of that new engine. Putting the turbocharged 2.5 litre petrol four cylinder into the Mazda 6 is a real masterstroke. When the engine debuted in the CX-9 a couple of years ago, we thought it was only gonna be a matter of time until it was moved into the smaller uh, passenger cars in Mazda's lineup. Well, as it happened, it took a little bit longer to see the Turbo 4 than we might have expected, but here it is. And outside the context of the CX-9, where it is a pretty good engine in that big SUV, it's even better unencumbered by all that mass and size, because the Mazda 6 is actually a pretty light car in the medium segment. It's about one and a half tons in sedan form, a bit heavier as a wagon. So it feels pretty fast, and so it should, because on paper it makes 170 kilowatts of power and 420 newton meters of torque, and that's a heap of torque uh, for just a four-cylinder turbo. Most cars that uh, the new Mazda 6 turbo competes against make a maximum of about 350 newton meters for the petrol, and that includes uh, the Volkswagen Passat 206 TSI, which is what I think this car's main rival will be. However, if you fill it up with 98 grade uh, petrol, you can actually extract 186 kilowatts of power out of this thing, so it's got plenty to go. Now, all that power gets to the front wheels only uh, by way of a six-speed automatic gearbox, no manual available. Uh, the auto is a pretty good one. Uh, it's tuned fairly conservatively left to its own devices, so it really chases fuel economy. But thankfully there is a little sport toggle next to the shifter, uh, which livens everything up considerably and you make really good progress in sport mode. Just in normal mode, it takes a while to kick down, but it's nice to have uh, the option of either. Now I say that the gearbox chases fuel economy left in drive. What's the fuel economy like? Well, it isn't great to be honest. So I've done 131 Ks now of relatively spirited, but not that spirited uh, country driving. I've only managed to get 9 litres per 100 k's, which is about 20% more than the claim of 7.6 combined. However, there's still the option of Mazda's fantastic 2.2 litre twin turbo diesel four cylinder if you're after maximum uh, fuel economy. That has 140 kilowatts of power now and 450 newton metres of torque. And I can't think of a time in the recent past where you've been able to choose a petrol with 420 newton metres a diesel with 450 newton meters in a car in this class. In fact, I'm pretty confident in saying this is the first time ever that you've had such an amazing choice as a buyer with either petrol or diesel, turbo petrol or diesel, you can't really go wrong. If anything, for me, I'd still be strongly considering the Mazda 6 diesel wagon, which is definitely the nichest choice of the whole range, simply because I think that engine really fits the character of the 6 very, very well. However, the turbo petrol is nice for people that prefer uh, the power to come in the upper band of, uh, of revs while still having plenty of torque down low, and it's fantastic to have the choice. Now, Mazda's 2.5 litre naturally aspirated four-cylinder petrol that used to be the only petrol in this car, that carries over. That's the petrol for the lower two grades, the Sport and the Touring grades. However, the GT and the Attenza, the upper two specifications, come with the turbo petrol by default, or the twin turbo diesel as an option. I don't think there's been a massive improvement to this car's noise, vibration, and harshness. It's still not up there with the best in class in terms of road noise. It's actually a fairly loud car on coarse chip surfaces. Something like a Volkswagen Passat is a lot more refined and will be a little more relaxing over longer road trips. And I double down on that comment because the ride quality on the 19 inch wheels in the Mazda 6 isn't very good. Unfortunately, there weren't any cars for us to drive today on the smaller 17 inch wheels that you get with the lower grades. However, undoubtedly, they'll be more comfortable. The 19s have that much less sidewall and just, it's a bit bouncy around town. It's a little unsettled. Things do settle down a bit at higher speed though. And 
like anything, you get used to it. The way the Mazda 6 has always stood out in the medium car class though is through its handling. It's not like a grown up MX-5 or anything, but it is one of the sportier cars in its class quite easily. The steering feels great. It's really uncorrupted despite the fact that this car is front wheel drive only. It loads up really nicely. There's a little bit of play, probably a bit too much play on center, but not a big deal. The weighting is about right. So it's nice and light in town and it does get much heavier uh, at higher speed. So you've got some good confidence in it. However, the actual steering ratio uh, doesn't adapt to the sport mode. So it's like one setting. So if you like it, then great. If you don't, you can't change it. While there is a little bit of body roll in the Mazda 6, it's very manageable and this car rides on Bridgestone Taranza tyres which are fairly grippy and given the fact it doesn't weigh very much, it's nice and adjustable, uh, it likes to be chucked around, it feels predictable and easy to drive hard and it's also rewarding and fun. I definitely think the Mazda 6 remains more fun than something like a Toyota Camry or a Skoda Superb which is so long. It, for me it's really between this car and the Passat 206 TSI in terms of what is the most fun car in this class. While Mazda have made some really fantastic efforts in terms of their standard safety kit over the last few years, one thing we've been saying for a long time is that we wanted to see the full suite applied throughout the whole Mazda range. Up until this point they've included things like autonomous emergency braking and forward and reverse and blind spot monitoring and stuff like that a little bit more democratically but here in the Mazda 6 you get everything as standard from the base model which is super impressive so the base 6 and every 6 in the range comes with AEB forward and reverse as I say blind spot monitoring rear cross traffic alert lane keep assist adaptive cruise control and driver fatigue detection so, so that's my first opinion of the substantially revised Mazda 6 the new turbo petrol engine on the high grades has given the 6 a new performance edge, while the option of the great twin turbo diesel continues to be a truly smart choice in the mid-size segment. While the 6 still isn't as refined as a Passat, it's better value, it looks great, it offers good practicality, and in true Mazda spirit, this car is a light, engaging and keen handler. If you're keen to avoid an SUV but want a family car that ticks almost every box, it's hard to do better under 50 grand than the Mazda 6. I'm a fan.